Are you confused or uncertain about either VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP? Well, today we're going to clear up that confusion and you will soon be your department or school's expert on both functions within Excel. Now, welcome to Excel Level Up, where our goal is to help you level up your Excel skills. So let's get started on this topic today. Now, what we're going to be discussing today are VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP. Both are lookup functions within Excel. Many people are more familiar with VLOOKUP, but actually that's the more traditional one. But XLOOKUP is a little bit newer of a system or a function within Excel. And I hope that you give that a chance. So please watch towards the end so you can learn more about XLOOKUP. And I think you'll find that you'll stop using VLOOKUP. Now, what we'll be going over today is we'll talk about some scenarios on when you need to use VLOOKUP and how it's used. We'll define the basic logic that VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP uses, and that right there will give you almost all the foundation you need in order to be a heavy user of both functions. And then we'll go over exact examples of both VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP so you know exactly how they work. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's a scenario that someone might run across. So I made a very simplistic sales table here of data that you might have in Excel. So we have product IDs on the left-hand side. So that's like a product that we've sold, what the quantity is, and then the date. You probably also would have things like amounts or other like um, metadata about this, but this is a pretty simplistic. Like for product one, I sold 500, then I sold product ID one again for 250 and so on. So this is something you would look at and why you might wanna use a VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP function. And how it would look is something like this. You know, many times when someone has these product IDs, you're not quite sure how you would be utilizing them or what those products are. In fact, they could be something as simple as this, like product one is a banana, two is an apple, and three is an orange. But when you look at the data on the left, you may not realize that because you could end up having hundreds or thousands of different products and they're not quite just three fruits like this. So it's something that you might wanna have more information in your main sales table. And this is where VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP can help you with this. So what I've seen pretty frequently is like, let's switch over and see how we can actually use these products to um, help you with your data analysis. So what you might start doing is you would usually add an extra field in like the data on the left where you wanna have either the product, a description or some other data brought over from another data table or another data site and brought into your main file. And that's what this would be right here. So this is what we're gonna be going over today about understanding the logic of this. So before we get into perhaps how we actually do it with VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP, let's think about how we would do this just as an individual if you had two pieces of paper in front of you. You would wanna be filling in this product here with either like once again, a banana, an apple, an orange, or any product that you might find. And how would you go about doing that one? Well, you would look at the product ID, and in this case, the first row is one, and then you would go over to the right and say, okay, where do I match this? Oh, it's obviously in the first one, one equals one. And then I know then that that first one must be a banana. And then I might perhaps like, you know, put a banana or something over there, either the text or actually a picture of that. And then just keep on repeating that. So the second row is a banana. The third one is an orange and then an apple and an orange again. So this is how we would do this with a piece of paper. And the good news is, is that Excel does this the exact same way. It's just that you have to define all these different elements for Excel, and then it will follow this exact same logic that we would do on a piece of paper. And that's basically where you're going to let Excel do the work for you. You just have to make a few definitions. If this is clear for you um, at this point about how you would do this and then knowing that Excel will, it's really good news because this means that right now you already know 90% of how this works. Now we just have to know how to fill in the blanks of making this work, which we'll cover in the upcoming slides. Okay, so now let's look how VLOOKUP runs here. So we have the same data that we just looked at. We have some sales information on the left and then kind of the metadata or definition of what the products are on the right. And what we wanna do is use VLOOKUP in order to populate the blanks here. And that's what we're gonna be going through. So we're gonna highlight that one. And so in cell B2 is where we're gonna build the formula through here. Now this is the basic VLOOKUP formula. 
there's going to be four elements that I think you have to fill in. Three of these were required, and I think the last one should be. And that's where we're going to walk through each one so that you can build a VLOOKUP formula to work. So let's kind of just start with the first one, the lookup value. It's just similar how we did it like in our hypothetical paper situation. And that's where we have to tell Excel where to look for the one ID of what we're looking up. So in this case, it's on the first row. It's going to be that cell A2. So let's start building the VLOOKUP formula together. So right away, I'm going to do equals VLOOKUP, open parentheses, and that's where I put the lookup value. So it's going to be in cell A2. I have my worksheet named data one, so that's where I'm calling the data one with the exclamation point. You could have something else. By default, it's usually sheet one, um, but I have data one. You could also be doing different files, so it's just something that you want to be looking at is that this is just my data, but your data could vary from this. So it's real easy defining the lookup value. Now we need to define the table array, and this is what we're going to go match it up against. So that right here is what we see now on the right where we have um, the product ID and the product here. So rows one through four, and then our columns A and B. So that is going to be our table array. So that's how what we have to define in the formula now. So it's basically data two, because now I'm gonna say this is a different data worksheet or could be possibly a different file. And it's gonna be cells A1 to B4. So all eight of those cells right there. I don't have to have the header ones, but it, I usually do, it doesn't hurt. You could also do this as columns only and not name them, but there's different ways to kind of skin a cat, so to speak, but I've gone ahead and just done A1 to B4. Now the problem is I would not leave it like this because what happens is if I have a formula that's set up in this way, if I make copies of it, it could change the A1 to B4 if I copy it down or copy it to the right. So I can't leave it like that. I have to lock in those references. And that's why you start putting in these dollar signs in front of the A1 and the B4. So altogether, we're going to have four dollar signs. And that's an Excel Pro tip right here, because now whatever I do to copy this, it's always going to be A1 to B4 by putting these dollar signs on there. Um, kind of an Excel Pro Pro tip. While I before added the A1 to B4, while I could have manually typed in the dollar signs, you can also hit the F4 key and it will automatically put them in there for you. So something to do to make sure it, you, when you copy this formula, it works the way you expect. The next one that we have to work about defining is one that's called call index num, which basically it's just shorthand for column index number. So what we have to do is, so we've already defined that the table array is this column A and B, what I have in red at the top, but now we have to tell VLOOKUP, what do we want to return? So what do we want to return to the cell that's highlighted in yellow? Now, how it means this is you don't actually say like column B, you have to actually say whether it's the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, whatever column it is. So you actually have to be very specific. And since right here, we want it to be the second column, what we're going to enter for the column index number is just a two. So really straightforward on here. So now in a sense, we've kind of replicated what we wanted from that paper example. We've defined what we're looking up, where we're looking up, and then what we want to return. The one last aspect here is an optional one, but I think you should always do it, is range lookup. And effectively, this is asking you how you want to match. It's really two options. You can do exact match or approximate match. In something like this, you want to do an exact match. So meaning one to one, two to two. The approximate has very specific use cases, and I will link to the top a full video that talks about that if you want to learn more. But I would say that most of the time you're going to want it to be an exact match. Unfortunately, VLOOKUP actually defaults to the approximate match and not the exact. So you actually have to tell VLOOKUP to flip it around and actually do the opposite of the default. So that's why what you're going to put in then is false here. So when you're spelling it out, you can either type in false or you'll notice that when you're typing it in, it actually creates a little drop down in the newer versions of Excel. Just choose false, and then it's going to do the exact match. Okay, so now we've defined our VLOOKUP formula. This is what we then would put into the yellow or highlighted cell. And as soon as we paste it in there, it's going to run that logic that we spoke about before, and it would return essentially like a banana. For VLOOKUP, actually, VLOOKUP can't do images, so it's going to bring over like the phrase banana or some description, whatever you want to call it. I'm just using the image here. It's just presentation only. Now, XLOOKUP, which we go over next, it can bring over images, 
if it's actually embedded into a cell. But just to be clear, you can't actually pull over an image with VLOOKUP, but I'm sure you get the impression here of what we're doing. So once I've put this now into cell B2, it returns back a representation of a banana. And then if I copy it down to the next row, then a banana will come back in this. If I copy it down to the next, now it's gonna recognize three is actually an orange and bring that over and so on. Then we get an apple and an orange again. So what we've successfully done now is replicated a VLOOKUP formula of bringing back values in here. So at this point, you should be a little bit clearer about how VLOOKUP can assist you in your day-to-day -day job in pulling data from one data set into another based on a predetermined logic that you've told VLOOKUP how to do. Now, before we get into XLOOKUP, if you're still watching this and it's been worthwhile for you, I'd love a thumbs up. That allows others to be recommended this video. That helps me. And also, if you enjoy content like this or want to learn more, uh, please feel free to hit the subscribe button, and then you will know when I add new material in the future. But let's go ahead and look at XLOOKUP. And as I said, it would be good for you to hang around even if you answered all your questions because it actually is, I find XLOOKUP to be a better and improved version of VLOOKUP. And I think you would as well. So we're gonna use the exact same setup with XLOOKUP. Same data set exactly. And then we'll go through about how we build this. And this is what I use whenever I use the lookups now. I can't even recall the last time I did a VLOOKUP in my day-to-day -day job. So once again, we're gonna be putting this into cell B2. And here's the formula for XLOOKUP, which is very similar to VLOOKUP. I'll kind of hit on the differences here, but let's jump right in. The lookup value is gonna be exactly the same as VLOOKUP. So what we're gonna to have to define is, what are we starting the lookup? And this is gonna be like cell A2. So let's build the XLOOKUP function together, XLOOKUP, open parentheses, and it's gonna be that data one A2. So right now it's exactly the same as VLOOKUP. And now we have to do the lookup array. This is now where changes are going to happen. Well, you might remember in VLOOKUP, we had to highlight the entire data set of where we were looking. Now, only thing we need to do is highlight the column of where we're looking. So that's all we need. We don't need to column B for this. In fact, we don't want to. You wanna do column A. So once again, we're gonna do that A1, but this time only to A4. We're not doing the B4. So it's A1 to A4. And once again, we're gonna do those pro tip here of putting those dollar signs in there. So when we copy it, it doesn't lose the reference that we've already set. Now we have to do the return array. This is the data that we wanna come back. And now we're gonna highlight effectively the fruit. So the banana, apple, and orange of what we wanna return on here. So instead of before we said like column two, now we have to define that column. So that's where right here in orange, we're gonna do B1 to B4. And once again, put those dollar signs so we lock in the reference right there. So instead of before we define the entire table and then did a number two, now we're going to actually define both columns that we need. And then the last one, which is a huge improvement from VLOOKUP, which if any reason I think is the most important reason to switch to XLOOKUP, is the if not found item. What this per, uh, parameter right here will do is saying, if it does not find the value that you're looking for in the table, what do you want Excel to do? You could actually run a, another function. You could put a formula in here. You could do lots of different things. What I usually do when I'm doing a, a quick X lookup is I put like some text value, like maybe like not found or missing value or something. You got to put it, you, to, you need to put it in quotes. But this then will return this value and then you could easily filter on it or recognize there's a problem. VLOOKUP will just return an error message that it can't find it, but it's something you can't control. This gives you a lot more, and this is a much more advanced topic, but let's say you had an Excel data file three or four or five, you could actually use this if not found to then have another XLOOKUP embedded within this table, within this function, and then you could search that one as well. So it's something that I think is a little bit more advanced, but if you think about it, you can constantly keep looking at more things if you necessarily you need to. Okay, so now we've completed the X lookup. Now when we paste this into the B2 cell, it's gonna work just like VLOOKUP had. It's gonna come in, it's gonna return the banana, the orange, the apple, and the orange again, just similar to previously. But I really do believe that if you give X lookup a chance, you're gonna find this is a much better and a more powerful tool as you get into using it as opposed to VLOOKUP. Anyway, the important lesson here is with VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP, you wanna be working smarter, not harder. And I think that's what both of these functions do. And you may be something you're running across. So I hope this did help you and I hope you have a great day.